Hello all, Driving Instructor Micah here. And if you've made it this far, then 90% of everything you just learned about left turns will work for right turns. But if you're joining us for the first time, I recommend rewinding the video or click the link above to watch the section we just did about left turns. Now, we save right turns for last because they can be a little bit harder than left turns. You have to deal with sharper turns, which means we can get a little too close to the curb. We have to deal with not clipping the curb, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start with the basics. Before any turn, you need to be scanning the road far in advance to learn the situation ahead. What kind of intersection will it be? Do you have a stop sign? Does cross traffic have stop signs? What's the traffic situation? Are there any bicycles or pedestrians? As you get closer to the intersection, start slowing down, but of course, check your rear view mirrors first to make sure it's safe that there are no dangerous moving vehicles approaching you from behind. Now that you have assessed the situation all around, it's time to prepare for a safe right turn. Gradually slow your vehicle by releasing the accelerator about 150 to 200 feet before your turn. You'll put your signal on at least 100 feet in advance, and after you do, you want to start to merge towards the right-hand curb. But wait, before you move closer to the curb, you want to check your blind spot to make sure all is clear. This fading towards the curb is a key difference between left and right turns. With left turns, you keep centered in the road, but for right turns, you always move towards the right curb after signaling. Of course, if there are parked cars or another obstacle, you will have to wait before you merge over. But eventually, you will always merge about four to five feet away from the curb before your right turn. As you near the intersection, you wanna apply gradual pressure to the brake so you can slow down to a safe speed. How much brake you use will depend on if you have to stop before your turn or if it will be a rolling turn with no stop. Let's look at some examples on how to prepare for different types of right turns. As you know, when you come to an always stop, the right of way is first come, first serve. We wanna redo all of our traffic and shoulder checks. You basically come to a full stop behind the crosswalk and then go when it's your turn. Because we're doing a right turn, we are already positioned about four to five feet from the curb. No pedestrians or bikes, that's good. And then start to turn when safe. We'll discuss speed and steering control in a bit, but for now, just watch to get the feel of how a good right turn looks. I start moving forward and making my right turn as I clear the curb, looking ahead on where I want my car to end up on the right side of the road. Again, targeting ahead is key. This is an intersection where we have a stop, but cross traffic does not. After stopping completely behind the crosswalk and doing our traffic checks, we need to inch out into the intersection to get a better view. Notice something new here I do for the right turn that I don't do for the left turn. As I inch out to get a better view, I start to angle the steering wheel slightly to the right. This allows me to start guiding my car into the turn while I get a better look at cross traffic. Once I am 100% sure that it is safe to go and that I won't impede anybody in the cross traffic, then I can accelerate to get fully into my turn. Again, looking ahead to where I want to end up on the right side of the road, creating a visual target that puts me between the parked cars and potential oncoming traffic. We successfully complete our turn, and as our wheels straighten out, we accelerate more to get up to the flow of traffic. Let's try a right turn at an intersection where cross traffic does not stop. I'm gonna put all the pieces together for you in real time so you can see it from the driver's perspective. Here we go. So, throwing our car in drive, I'm gonna smog to the left to make sure there's nothing in my blind spot so I can safely enter traffic. And then up ahead, there's a two-way stop where I'm gonna try a right turn. We wanna start slowing down 150 to 200 feet before the turn and smog to the right before fading into the curb four to five feet. Now next, I'm gonna do a nice, smooth, and full complete stop behind the limit line. And as I start my traffic checks, I notice I cannot see. So I need to inch out. I'm gonna slightly turn my wheel to the right. I'm gonna start inching out and do more traffic checks. There's a bush and a parked car on my left that blocks my view from cross traffic. 
Now I feel like I can safely see that there is no traffic coming and I'm gonna start my right turn by turning one, two, three, hold there and then bring the wheel back, three, two, one, and then I'm gonna check my rear view mirror. Traffic looks good. That is a right turn at a two-way stop. At an intersection where you have the immediate right of way and everything is safe and clear, you can make what we call a rolling right turn, a turn where you slow down, but you don't stop first. After you signal and do all of your mirror traffic and shoulder checks and have moved within four to five feet of the curb, you'll just roll through slowly and make your right turn at about 10 to 15 miles an hour, like this. Keep in mind, I had already slowed down before my turn to a safe turning speed. Also, you may have noticed that I started to angle my steering wheel slightly to the right as I entered the intersection and then fully started turning the wheel after my mirror passed the curb. During the actual turn, I just gently coast with my foot over the brake and then accelerated out of the turn as I finished the turn and counter steered back to the middle. Most importantly, the entire time I was looking ahead and visualizing where I wanted to end up, choosing a visual reference point on the right side of the road a few feet clear of the parked cars. Now let's do a rolling right turn together where we put all the pieces together from the driver's perspective. We're gonna start by slowing down 150 to 200 feet before the turn, smog to the right to make sure there's nothing in our blind spot, fade into the curb four to five feet, and then before we turn, traffic check left, right, left, start the turn, one, two, three, hold and coast, bring the wheel back, three, two, one, Check our rear view mirror, traffic's looking good, and that is a rolling right turn. Let's do a right turn example with a parked car interfering with our normal plan for making a right turn. In this example, if I start to do my right turn when my mirror passes the curb like I usually do, I will probably clip or swipe the parked car ahead of me in the lane where I intended to turn into. In this scenario, I'm gonna have to make my right turn much sharper than normal. To compensate, I will take this turn a little slower and I won't start my turn until my mirror passes the parked car. While doing this forces me to make a very sharp turn, it allows me to safely finish on the right side of the road while avoiding a scrape with the parked car. Now that we all know the safety rules as well as how to assess and prepare ourselves for a successful right turn, let's go over the motor skills needed to carry out a right turn. That is, let's discuss what our brain needs to have our feet and hands do in order for this turn to happen. Here we go. Just like with left turns, right turn speed really depends on a lot of factors. Is the turn sharp or wide? Is the curb a gradual curve or very pointed and sharp? Are there a lot of parked cars making things tight? Are you turning into a very narrow street? Are you starting your right turn from a dead stop or is it a rolling right turn? The point is, every turn will have a slightly different flavor, but in general, 10 to 15 miles an hour should be your speed goal for a right turn. Again, don't stare at the speedometer and only glance if you really have to. Eventually, you'll just get a natural feel for the safe and appropriate speed for each turn. Also, don't forget the speed blueprint you should always follow for a rolling right turn. Slow down well before the turn. Release and cover the brake coasting through the arc of the turn. Accelerate out of the turn. Say it with me one more time. Slow before, cover during, accelerate out. When we discussed left turns, we broke down two good options for handling the wheel, hand over hand and push and pull. The idea is exactly the same for right turns, except that you'll basically move the wheel in the opposite direction than you did for left turns, which is a no-brainer, of course. In general, making right turns is mechanically harder because the turns tend to be sharper than your average left turn. In addition, many beginner drivers struggle with oversteering, where they turn the wheel too much and risk hitting the curb or parked cars. Again, it's important to keep your visual reference point on the lane where you want to finish. Taking your time will help you overcome this as well. Finally, right turns are a little different when it comes to the steering wheel movement at the beginning of your turns. You will usually start to turn your wheel slightly, maybe a quarter turn as you enter the intersection, and then start your full turn once your mirror passes the curb. Remember, 
For your left turns, you never start turning the wheel at all until your mirror passes the curb and you are ready to commit to your turn. But for right turns, you do start to turn a little earlier. Just as with left turns, the hand over hand technique is a three step process, but now we do it in reverse order. Step one, with your wheel already turned a quarter of the way to the right and both hands reset on the wheel at the 10 and two position, your first movement will be with your left hand. As your right hand releases grip of the wheel, use your left hand to push the steering wheel from the 10 o'clock position to about the two o'clock position like this. Step two, now with your right hand, reach over your left hand and grab the steering wheel at the 10 o'clock and pull it to the two o'clock position as you release your left hand grip. Step three, now put your left hand back to the 10 o'clock position and hold the wheel steady while you make the arc of your right turn. Looking at the steering wheel, it should now be turned about three quarters to a full turn, somewhere between facing left and right side up. And that's about how much you turn your wheel for a normal right turn. For a wide turn, you'll turn it a bit less. For a very sharp turn, you may turn it a bit more. Again, every turn will be unique, but in general, most turns can be done with the hand over hand steps we just outlined. After starting your turn and you have reached your intended target, you can now walk the steering wheel back to the forward position like this. Three, two, one. When you put it all together, it's one, two, three to start the right turn and then walk it back three, two, one to return the wheel to the normal position and complete the turn. Let's get out on the street and do a couple of right turns so you can watch the entire hand over hand technique from start to finish. Here we are at an always stop. Let's turn to the right. My wheel slightly turns to the right as I pull forward and as soon as my right mirror passes the curb, I continue by turning hand over hand to the right like this. One, two, three. I hold the wheel through the turn and aiming at my target, I begin to walk the wheel back. Three, two, one. Easy. Now a rolling right turn. I've already slowed down and positioned myself closer to the curb. I enter the intersection, I start to angle my wheel slightly, and as my mirror passes the curb, I turn the wheel one, two, three, and I hold it and start to counter steer three, two, one, as I accelerate out of the turn. Beautiful. My personal preference is to use the push-pull method more so for left turns, because left turns are wider and the push-pull method is great for wider turns. However, you can still make right turns using the push-pull method, so let's go over how that works for right turns specifically. Again, the push-pull is most easily executed by starting with the nine and three hand positions. With your hands on the nine and three positions, you push the wheel up with your left hand until the 12 position like this. Then grab the wheel with your right hand at the same 12 position without crossing your hands and pull it down to the three position. You will probably have to repeat the same motion twice Left hand pushes the wheel up from nine to 12. Right hand pulls the wheel down from 12 to three. Let's do an actual right turn using the push pull method so you can see it better illustrated. As we approach the intersection with our signal on, slowing down and fading towards the curb, I begin to angle my wheel slightly to the right as I enter the intersection. Then as soon as my mirror passes the curb, I push the wheel up to the 12 position with my left hand and then pull the wheel down with my right hand to the three position. I repeat the same motion as needed and then hold the wheel through the turn and then basically do the opposite as I come out of the turn. Basically shuffle the wheel back to the normal position as I accelerate out of the turn. And there you have it. Everything I could possibly think to teach you about turning. You should now be able to safely and properly practice left turns and right turns to your heart's desire. With that said, I have a feeling many of you out there are passionately wondering why we haven't discussed the concept of letting the wheel slide back or spin back when finishing a turn. Well, wonder no more, my friends. Let's talk about that. So far, we've discussed walking back the wheel to the center position after completing a turn. Not only is this an essential skill to know, it's the only way you can counter steer older cars without power steering, and it's the only way you can counter steer any car if you are at a standstill or moving extremely slowly. 
You see, all cars in recent history come equipped with a power steering feature that allows the steering wheel to actually correct itself as the car moves. In fact, the faster you accelerate, the quicker the steering wheel will correct itself by spinning back to the center position. Don't believe me? <laughs> Check this out. And for the kids out there, don't try this at home. I've got my steering wheel cranked all the way to the left. Now notice that I'm not touching the steering wheel at all, but as I gently accelerate, watch the steering wheel start to correct itself towards the center position. The faster I accelerate, the faster the wheel unwinds itself. Amazing, right? Or at least it's mildly interesting. Anyway, utilizing this brilliant feature, many seasoned drivers complete their turns by allowing the momentum of their car to counter steer for them. That is, as they complete their turn, they allow the steering wheel to spin back through the loose grip of their hands to the center position like this. As I accelerated out of the turn, the steering wheel naturally spins back to the starting position. While this spin back happened, did you notice how I never lost contact with the wheel? The wheel slid through my palms and fingers and I could have grabbed the wheel at any time if I needed to make a sudden correction. It is important that you always keep both hands in contact with the wheel if you do the slide back technique, especially if you plan on passing your drive test. Anyway, this is an advanced technique and one we do teach, but only after our students have demonstrated that they can walk or shuffle the wheel back to the center position manually. One thing I wanna point out is the importance of checking your rear view mirror after you complete your turn. This is often overlooked, but as a good defensive driver, you'll want to survey the traffic situation behind you after completing your turn. Now that you have turned onto a new street, do you see any emergency vehicles to the rear or maybe a speeding car racing towards you? Take a look in your rear mirror after each turn to figure that out and take evasive action if needed. If you are driving a truck or SUV, you wanna take your turns a little more slowly than if you were driving a low to the ground car. Trucks, vans, and SUVs have a higher center of gravity and are therefore more likely to tip over if you take a sharp turn at a high rate of speed. And there you have it, folks. 6,000 words. After Alejandra and I started this long-winded lecture on turns, we're finally ready to bring this video to an end. We hope you learned a lot today and we want to reiterate the importance of being patient and take your time learning to turn. After all, turning is one of the most challenging skills for new drivers and not everyone learns it in a single lesson. It could take two or three. If you can convince your parents, then go out to an empty parking lot and really practice. Do turn after turn after turn with your signed permit, of course. And I promise you, it will eventually become second nature and you won't even think about all these steps we discussed today. It will simply become part of who you are as a driver. All right, everyone, now it's our turn to sign off. For Micah and Alejandra and everyone at Drivers Ed Direct, we wish you the best of luck on your driving journey and we'll see you again soon. See ya. Instructor Jay here. Thank you so very much for watching. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel where you'll find other videos that will help you pass your test and continue driving safely on the road.